Hey guys, and welcome back to Mad About Skin. For those of you who've been with the channel for some time, you'll know one of my favourite, favourite brands is Beauty of Joseon. In fact, I crowned them my favourite Korean skincare brand in a recent video, which I'm going to leave a link to up there. However, as with all brands, they have their ding 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 holy grail products, and they have their wah 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 total fails. In the case of this brand, just one fail, which I think is pretty good going. However, a lot of products do sit in between those two measures, so I thought it'd be quite fun to rank all of the Beauty of Joseon skincare products from my least favourite through to my absolute holy grails. The inspiration for this video actually came from Alice in the Rabbit Hole, who's one of my favourite content creators here on YouTube. She did a very similar video, but I dis definitely disagreed with her ranking and where she placed certain products. I thought it'd be fun to recreate it here. I've left a link to her video in the description box below, and I definitely would recommend you check it out. But in true Mad About Skin style, shall we just cut that waffle and delve straight on in? Now, before we get into this video, just a gentle reminder to do all that YouTube-y stuff if you haven't already. If you could reach down and give this video a thumbs up and a like, it's a fabulous way of supporting me as a content creator, because the more likes a video gets, the more widely YouTube will distribute it on its platform, which just enables as many people as possible to discover our wonderful Mad About Skin family. For that, I'm always so, so grateful. Also, these are just my thoughts, feelings and opinions, so I would love to know what are like your top three and any fails from the beauty of Joseon brand. Sound up in the comments section below and let's get that conversation going. Now I'm going to start with my least favourite product first and it's this. This is the Apricot Blossom Peeling Gel. I wanted to love this because I love the packaging, I love the colour, I love how they presented the product. Now quite a lot of Korean skincare brands have their own peeling gels and I just say this is one of my least favourite that I've tried. They all contain cellulose which when you work into the skin kind of balls up. It gives that sensation you feel like you're slothing off all of that dead skin cells. That's what's really balling up and you're washing off the skin. It's not, it's the cellulose, but it's a very satisfying experience. And um, that cellulose, once it balls up, does give a very light manual exfoliation too. However, this one was quite irritating on the skin. I felt after I'd used it a couple of times, my skin was quite tight. It was quite sensitized. And I thought that's not something I usually experience with Korean peeling gels. There are just some better ones on the market. I'm glad I tried this. And you know what? I liked the idea. I liked where they were going with it, but it just didn't deliver for me. I would rather get my exfoliation fixed from a gentle exfoliating acid, which I feel I'm more in control of. So glad I tried it, but I definitely won't be repurchasing. My next three least favourite products are all of their serums, and I know this is going to come as a surprise because these are holy grails for a lot of people online. I just didn't have the best experience with them. I think they're so gentle, it takes so long to see the results. Maybe I was just a little bit impatient, and I think there are better alternatives. My least favourite of the serums is this. This is the Glow Serum, which has propolis and niacinamide in. Propolis, I love as an ingredient, really, really nice to nourish and soothe the skin. That niacinamide will help, you know, even out the complexion and brighten it over time, but I think the amount of time you're going to have to invest to get results from this is ridiculous. I would rather reach for a vitamin C derivative, which is just as gentle, but it'll speed up the results, and I just found, you know, overall I got a better level of luminosity from. So this, again, a bit of a firm pass for me. I think the Revive Serum is slightly better than that Glow Serum. This has ginseng and snail mucin in here. Not a big fan of snail mucin for reasons that I captured in a video, which I'll link up there, but if you want to try this ingredient out and you want it in a relatively low concentration, this this is probably the product that I'd recommend. It's got a low concentration of that snail mucin alongside some ginseng, other brightening ingredients too, and it will help to calm, soothe, and over time repair the skin. Definitely, definitely delivers, but again, I think it's a product you have to invest in for quite a period of time to see those results. The best of the serums for me is this. This is the Calming Serum. This contains green tea and panthenol, two of my favourite ingredients in skincare. Panthenol calms and soothes the skin, it's a wonderful B vitamin, and green tea is also very, very soothing, but also has some great antioxidants benefits too. So it's kind of like a two-in-one. A really, really nice serum that I would use to buffer between, say, like exfoliating acids and my peptides to take any irritation down if you have particularly redness-prone skin would be a nice one to include. And all around, a really, really nice serum. Probably the best of the three. But again, I think I've just discovered some other holy grail calming serums that I find I'm reaching for this less and less often. Now, those are the products I probably won't repurchase after I've used them up, but there's absolutely nothing wrong with them. And maybe I've just found better alternatives. Now, I want to come to the rest of the collection, which honestly, holy grails. I am going to go in the order of my least favourite through to my favourite with these, but they're all kind of favourites, so set it in that context. Up next is this, the Beauty of Joseon Dynasty Cream. Now, this is a really, really nice moisturiser, which I think if I had a drier skin type would probably come higher up on this favourites list. I have quite an oily, acne-prone skin type, so I tend to only use this when I need that extra burst of hydration. It's not super, super thick and a 
inclusive, but it's definitely thicker than a traditional gel moisturizer, which is my personal preference. And they actually reformulated this to remove some of the potentially irritating ingredients from it, which I love. Listening to consumer feedback and improving their products is always something I applaud brands for doing. And it hasn't got a really thick gluey smell that some fragrance-free moisturizers can. So from that, it ticks all of the boxes. It looks, look at that, bougie, luxury. You know, I think I paid like 10 pounds for this, but it looks like you spent a whole lot more when you see that sitting on the vanity, which I love really good, nicely thought through packaging. And this definitely delivers that alongside that gorgeous level of hydration. Now up next are their two cleansers. They have this, this is the Green Plum Refreshing Cleanser. And this is the Radiance Cleansing Balm. So obviously if you were looking to do a double cleanser, Cleanse, you start with the balm, you'd follow with the plum cleanser. For me, I don't double cleanse that often, but when I do, I tend to reach for this one as like my go-to cleansing balm. So nice, beautiful blend of different oils that I find really just melts away everything on the skin. Waterproof makeup, not an issue. This will remove it. Multiple layers of water-resistant sunscreen. Again, this kind of just covers it all, which I absolutely love. It doesn't leave the skin feeling stripped and dried, which again is a huge positive. I feel you get like a tiny, tiny film left on the skin after you've rinsed it off. So I don't think you could use this as a standalone cleanse. You need to follow with a gel cleanser afterwards, but most people do anyway. So I'm not gonna knock them too many marks off for that. This though is a standout, standout product. I love the color for a start. Again, I'm a very visual person. I want to reach for a product and look forward to reaching for it because the packaging appeals to me. Definitely get that with this. And it's such a nice, lightly foaming cleanser. It's not one of those like super, super heavy foams which strip and dry the skin, but it definitely, definitely works as a standalone cleanser in its own right. I don't like those gel cleansers that you feel like you have to use as part of a double cleanse in order for them to be effective because, you know, we don't always want to do that. This works in its own right but also works as a separate second step in a double cleanse it's a great product that will work for all skin types no matter whether you're super dryness prone or oily and acne prone it kind of just does it all which is why i absolutely love it now we're in the home straight and coming up next are their two essences and toners now i get very confused between the differences between essence and toners i know there is a very very key difference between the two especially in traditional korean skincare but here in the west you find brands just tend to use interchangeably so i count them together we've got the G Ginseng Essence Toner, which is amazing if you're looking for hydration, calming, soothing, and over time, it's clinically proven as an ingredient to brighten the complexion too, which I love. It comes in the most rich and decadent color, which again, is very visually appealing, and it just glides onto the skin. I tend to use it in the palms of my hand, a couple of drops, pat it in. You could use it on a cotton round and swipe it off if you want to, but I find you end up wasting a lot of product like that. So a couple of dabs onto the palm of your hand, work it in, and then just press it into the skin extra hydration the ultimate cooling experience and yeah it's just a really really nice product to use i've got some very nostalgic memories from the beauty of joseon bubble toner and um, i think this was actually the first product from the line that i actually tried and i was hooked on day one so this has green plum extract in here it's also got a low concentration of alpha hydroxy acids off the top of my head i think it's three percent though i'll confirm that and leave it in the description box below that's great. Now, everybody wants to go in for a really harsh, high concentration exfoliating acid. Something super gentle like this can work really well, particularly if you use it consistently in your skincare routine. Why I love this is it foams up. It just has such a unique texture to it. And those the bubbles kind of pop on contact with the skin. Super refreshing, great to use in a morning skincare routine. Now, a lot of us, you know, people that grew up in the 90s and early noughties will probably remember a lot of the acne washes had these pumps on and they were stripping and they dried the skin out. Kind of put that to one side. It has a very similar sensation, but it's formulated so much better. It doesn't strip, it doesn't dry, it lightly exfoliates without irritating, and it's just a really nice product. Innovative, because there's not a lot like this on the market anymore, and it's just, yeah, just one of those products that, well, it was so good, it got me hooked on the whole brand. So you know that's why I sing its praises. Now, a drum roll, please, for the top two, and this is gonna surprise a lot of you. I think before this video, those of you that know me well from this channel will probably thought that this was going to come in pole position the beauty of joseon rice relief sunscreen it's actually not it's been pipped to the post by another product that i'm going to come on to in a minute but honestly this is just the best sunscreen hands down i've ever tried i've left a link to this as i will all the products mentioned today in the description box below if you do want to check them out but this will blow your mind when you put it on the skin i think we're all used to sunscreens being quite thick quite greasy and if they are super lightweight we then question whether they actually have the sun protection the brand claims thanks for that purito <laughs> but this does tried tested and independently verified so you know you're getting that 50 plus protection and it is so so lightweight truly invisible 
available on the skin, it glides in, and it's so hydrating that if, like me, you have a super oily, acne-prone skin type, this is your moisturizer and your sunscreen in one. It's super affordable, and I see, I just, I, I cannot express to you how much I love, love, love this sunscreen. And it's probably the first one that I've actually tried that has made me look forward to applying sunscreen. I want to reach for this, whereas before I reached for sunscreen because I had to, not because I wanted to. So, so beautiful, and definitely, definitely worthy of. Well, this would be number one in any other brand's list, but it has just been pipped to the post. Let me introduce you to the beauty of Joson Retinol Eye Cream. Now, I don't have this on me because actually my order is still somewhere in the universe working its way over to me. But a friend of mine got this before me. I was very, very jealous. I stayed at hers a couple of nights, used it every night, and was like, wow. Not only is this the most beautifully textured eye cream I have ever tried, but it's also got some really good ingredients. So I said earlier that I wasn't a big fan of the beauty of Joseon serums because I found that they were just a little bit too gentle. You had to wait so long for the results, I questioned whether they were actually worth it. It's kind of the opposite with this eye cream. You find a lot of retinol eye creams will use retinol palmitate, which I covered why I don't like that ingredient in a recent video, which I'll link up there. So ineffective, you're probably not going to get any anti-aging benefits from it at all. But they could put the retinol label and they know people will buy it because it's a super popular ingredient. Beauty of Joseon haven't done this. They've used retinal in this formulation. Now, it might only be one letter difference, but it is like a whole different world. Retinal, also known as retinaldehyde, is my favourite form of vitamin A derivative. It tends to be better tolerated by the skin than other um, forms of retinoids, and it delivers much greater um, effect when it comes to anti-aging because it needs to go through fewer conversions to get to the retinoic acid that our body uses for that line smoothing and erasing benefit. This is really good. If you want to know reasons why I prefer retinal over retinol, again, covered in a video, which I'll link up there. This, so, so good. It glides onto the skin. It's not packed full of oils, so if you've got melia, those little white bumps under the eye, and you're a little bit wary of using eye creams and serums, because often they can exacerbate that, this won't, because it isn't really heavy, thick, and packed full of oils, which can trigger that melia. It's just an all-round holy grail formulation. I have two on order and they're promising me that they're going to be coming around the corner to my house any minute now and I cannot wait to get this into my evening skincare routine because a couple of times I've used it I was like yes this, this is just an amazing amazing product and you read those ingredients list and I know that you'll be sold the same way that I am. Definitely definitely want to check out if you want a nice anti-aging eye cream in your skincare routine. Beauty of Joson knocked it out of the park with this formulation. So there you have it guys a rundown of my top products from my favorite Korean skincare care brand. Do you disagree with anything in this list? Sound off in the comments section below. Honestly, I don't think you can go wrong with Beauty of Joseon. Well, maybe with that apricot like peeling gel. That, that was a bit of a pass, but the rest of it all delivered really great benefits. You need some patience with those serums because these will act in the long term rather than the immediate term and the rest of the products will be instant wins and holy grails for you. Wherever you are in the world, guys, stay safe, stay well and love your skin. Take care. Bye!